Welcome, guys. Um, talking season's over. It's time to do more, and we've had a really good uh, conditioning off-season session. Some really good bars kind of hit uh, from a max standpoint in summer conditioning, and want to give a lot of credit to Scott Sinclair and his staff. You know, they they do tireless work um, during the summer, and we don't get to see a lot of it because our players are um, on, on a little different schedule, but. Our guys have been excited to get started for camp, and Scott's staff did a great job working with them. It's very time intensive. Sometimes they have to have four and five workouts a day with different groups, so they're repeating the same workouts, and uh, our strength staff's by far the best in the country, in my opinion, at what they do. So excited for them and excited to get started. So with that, I'll uh, open it up. Well, I think when you think about training camp or preseason camp for us it's about creating an identity so we're trying to get effort toughness all those intangibles you can't get all those in one day I mean we can't go out there today and create a lot of toughness by how we hit people because we don't have pads on um, but the biggest thing we're trying to do is be the best conditioned team in the country most disciplined team in the country and defensively we're trying to improve our pass rush and um, a lot of other areas but I'm excited about seeing those guys we've got a lot of competitions on defense that are going to be uh, wide open Yeah, I, you'd say revamped. I wouldn't say revamped. I feel like we've got a lot of guys coming back that have played a lot of snaps, and um, I'm excited about those guys. I mean, when you look at it, the group that we went out with there in the bowl game with is the group we're playing with now. Um, so a lot of those guys have gained experience. We've got some really good competition in that room. So I'm excited about those guys. Uh, they're a year older. You know, we were really young. I felt like last year in the secondary and new, and this year we've got some more experienced players and. Um, best players are going to get to play, and the, the guys that kind of buy into the principles and values, they're going to be the guys that play for us. To what extent, Coach, can Dewan Mathis participate right now? Well, Dewan's not fully cleared, but Dewan's able to do passing drills, uh, individual drills, um, things where we know that he can be safe and not take a hit um, and not risk injury. So, still don't know when he's going to be fully cleared, but I'm excited to see him go out and work today. I mean, he's going to get to do seven on seven. He gets to do individual drills. He gets to do a lot of things. Talk about the offensive line, Coach Deontre Hill. How is he coming along? Deontre's done a great job. Uh, number one, he's helped reshape his body from a strength standpoint. He's been able to lift more. His weight hasn't changed a lot, but his body fat's gone down. Um, we've seen a lot of quickness in his ability to reach people, to play at center. He's powerful. Uh, he's smart. You know, he's going to be calling a lot of protections, doing a lot of things along with Jake, and excited about uh, DeAndre's attitude, um, his effort. He's done a lot of good things this offseason. Jake coming into his third camp, how does that feel for you? Well, uh, glad we got him. I mean, Jake's a good football player, and he's smart, and he does a lot of good things from a leadership standpoint. He has tremendous energy in meetings and practice. His enthusiasm rubs off on people, his confidence does. Uh, it's comforting to know you've got a guy who's had that much experience. And that's a luxury because you don't always get that in this game. Um, in terms of the, the atmosphere of training camp or preseason camp, however you end up working it there, how important is it, I guess, to, to you know, get the guys in the hotel again to spend this entire period together rather than just coming into practice, going out? I think training camp's a grind. And I think it's important that it is that way. You create adversity in camp. Um, you know, we practice almost every day, with the exception of uh, we have to give them a day off per week. But it's 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 a grind, and you go to the point of getting exhausted. You go from running two, three thousand yards a workout in the summer to possibly running five, six thousand at practice. So we create adversity through how we practice. The heat creates adversity. Our team will be defined how they respond to all these situations. I mean, you guys may write and say it's going to be based on this guy or that guy, but it's really what who we become in camp. What is our level of toughness? What is our level of effort? What is our level of commitment to all the things that, that we've got to be good at? And we say all the time, it takes what it takes. It takes what it takes to be great. So there's really no choice. There's no decision. It takes what it takes. And it takes hard work, man. It takes beating the heat. And that's what this is about. It's finding who's got some grit uh, within them. Well, 
I mean, I, I would never turn my back on leadership regardless of how good our players are as leaders. And I think that's still yet to be defined. I'm certainly pleased with where they are right now. And we've got a lot of guys that care about this team. They care about this university. And it's important to them that they have a successful season. They still have to confront and demand excellence of everybody. But, you know, I, I would never take my attention away from one thing to another, especially as important as leadership. Because I just I don't think you – that's that's the ethos. All the stuff that goes into our team is way more important than what play we call, what defense we call, what offense we call. It doesn't matter when it comes to that. Sure, I'll update us on the, uh, the defensive line guys. You guys some guys that were held out injury-wise, and I get chosen your wise in there as well. Yeah. Everybody's cleared on the D-line. Julian is going to be cleared today, but we're not in pads. Were we in pads and tackling, he's still got some uh, some room to improve there to do full contact. But all those guys are back. Mikael Carter, Julian, all the young guys will be out there, the freshmen. Uh, Zamir is same as the last time you asked. I mean, he's doing well. He's ready to go out and compete. Uh, excited to have him out there. He's excited to be back. And he's a lot further post-op, obviously, than a guy like Julian, who had his at the end of the season. Where, um, what's the plan for Zamir, like once you guys put the pads on? Will, will he go ahead and start getting a little bit of Zemir's, there? Zamir's cleared. So again, we'll do everything like normal. He'll be thudded, just like every other back will be thudded. And uh, we'll progress from there. We don't tackle mostly live until the first scrimmage. Not really. I mean, what we did at the finish of last year is behind us. We're looking forward. We're excited about this year. I thought we had a good camp last year, and uh, it's really important we have a good camp this year. I don't think it changes much. I don't look at the guys that weren't the guys I brought here any different than the ones that I did. I mean, they're part of the University of Georgia program. They adhere to our principles and values, and I love the guys that I inherited as much as the guys that we recruited. So it's, it doesn't change much in my mind. Well, he's a great person for me to lean on. He's a guy that uh, has been a head coach at the high school level. Uh, he's done a, a, a head head coaching short stint there at Georgia Southern when he took over for the bowl game. Um, he's very wise. He can relate to the players. He's a great recruiter, very knowledgeable with, with uh, making adjustments on offense. So he's been a huge bonus for me personally. And when I'm not here, he's usually the guy in charge. I don't know to meet my criteria. Those are your words. They wouldn't be my words. Um, I don't. He, he doesn't have to. What he has to do is play within our system and play well within our system and play better than the people in front of him. And that's his challenge. That hasn't changed from what that was last year. So he still has to play the best three to be the first three out there. To be in the top six and rotate, he's got to be in the top six. And I fully expect him to do that. He did that in the spring. He competed really well. Um, he's done a lot of good things. Um, there's a lot of things that he can still work on. That's all our guys can. But he is fast. He's explosive. I think he understands the system a little better. And I think he's probably more prepared for the competition level he's going against now. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of depth. He had that depth kind of in the spring. The only guy would be Walter that's a little bit different where he was working both sides. You know, he's not doing that right now. He's working with outside backers. So we've got, we've got good depth there. I'm excited about that. But at the same time, the guys that were there, other than Nolan and Jermaine, were all there last year, and we weren't as productive as we needed to be at that position. So we've got to improve some production. We've got to create some ways for those guys to take advantage of their skill set, which is fast, big. Well, we got to get rush. I mean, bottom line is, if we don't get rush, it doesn't matter what we do. And those guys help generate that. How are the receivers coming along for this year? You know, I haven't got to see them enough. I mean, it's uh, I see them lift. 
I see them do conditioning at times, but it's hard to answer that question without some practice. Yeah, I think we'll find a lot more out about that when we put pads on. It's hard to say right now where they are if you're referencing the three new ones and, you know, Cager, who's done it at a high level, but he hasn't done it with us. So I'm excited to see those guys work. They got a chip on their shoulder. You guys, you know, continue to call them out. I continue to call them out. That gives them an opportunity to go shine. So I'm, I'm excited about what those guys can do. And I hope the growth happens fast and we need to get those guys touches as much as possible so they get some confidence because the biggest thing they're missing is experience. Oh, it's it's uh, fascinating for all of us when you see the run against Kentucky and uh, some of the other runs he's had in Missouri, the cutback run. I mean, he's he's an incredible guy with the ball in his hands. We got to find ways to do that, and I'm certainly excited for him to be 100 percent and for him to play at a high level. What's the biggest uh, challenge uh, initially for Duke? I know you got a lot of guys who are going to be trying to mix them in that. What's the biggest challenge? Create rush. I mean, create havoc. That's that's the mantra for all of them. I mean, number one, they got to get on the field. They got to beat people out. They got to compete. We've got to be an unbelievable conditioning and shape to be able to play play after play at the pace that these offenses play. But at the end of the day, we got to be productive. We got to cause havoc. We got to tackle for a loss, sacks, ball disruptions. We got to get those things out of the defensive front. He's a product of a program. I mean, very rarely do you find a guy that's a fifth-year senior that gets better every single year. Because what happens is guy comes out for the draft, guy transfer, guy plays four years because he didn't get redshirted. But J.Y. is a unique guy that he's stronger now than most of the guys. He's been in the weight room for five years. Um, he's more mature. He understands the defensive system. There's just a lot of value in having seniors. I mean, the best teams I've been around have been senior laden and fewer and fewer college teams have a lot of seniors. But he's a guy that's been a product of development and being part of this program. And he gives you uh, consistency and he gives you toughness. And that's something we're trying to create in our team. Yeah, that was two days ago. It would have been illegal yesterday. We're not allowed to do anything. But um, I enjoy those th situations, and I think the kids do. They want a chance to compete. They want a chance to have fun and a chance to change things up. And as long as they're getting to work a lot of times, the difference in running around that track and running around that field is not that big a difference. So those kids enjoy that, and I enjoy watching them compete. Yeah, number one, health. I mean, he's got to stay healthy. He's got to be able to maintain his health, maintain his body weight. Um, he's explosive. Um, he's got to learn the offense to the point where he's comfortable being able to line up at all positions. Um, we had a lot of packages with him involved last year, and some games we didn't need it, and some games we did, and, and he, he wasn't able to execute it. But that's not where he is now. He's a much more mature individual, and we're excited to see what he can do. I think he's you know, one of our most explosive players. I don't think so. I think the biggest thing is, is how we finish is important. And you learn from that, but you learn from that in the off season. I mean, you learn from that from the day we get back from those games and we start our workouts and we emphasize dog time, which for us is the fourth quarter all the time. So we're always looking forward and we're always looking for an opportunity to put ourselves in a good situation to execute. You learn from your mistakes, but you don't dwell on them. Yeah, Richard's uh, much wiser. He's uh, very, he's much more coachable. 
he understands that uh, he's in pursuit of excellence, not perfection, and there's a difference. And I think that as he grows, he can help the younger players in that room realize that you're not going to be perfect, but we are in pursuit of excellence. And when a coach asks you something, challenges you, it's just to help you. And he's now much more receptive of that, and I think it's made him a lot better player. Give me all he's got. I mean, that's I, I don't say you got to have 64 tackles, three sacks. I mean, my expectation is that he leads our defense, that he gives us all he's got, and he competes and he teaches the younger players. How much of a uh, committee, I guess, are you comfortable with at linebacker? I know you kind of did that last job in assessing with all these young players. Are you looking at that being a more of a package deal? Or just looking it's going to depend on how the separation is. If there's a lot of separation, you won't see a package. If there's not much separation and it becomes an advantage for us to keep a fresh guy out there, then we'll play more. I mean, the bottom line is we want the best players on the field at the right time. And if somebody stands out, somebody's exceptional. I mean, we didn't have a package when Roquan was here. So, I mean, we're, we're going to have uh, by committee if it's dead even. that don't sweat the little things. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of big things going on that are a lot more important than little things and, and don't sweat them and whatever it is, keep moving because it'll pass. What are some of the little things you I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of details that I still really focus on because I like to and I think it's important every inch of practice. We only get a limited amount of time on that grass. So every inch of that's really important. Outside of that, you know, making sure that your, your coaches have the freedom to coach and your coaches have uh, their personality impacting their position groups. Uh, you got a lot of new faces on the defensive line. Can you tell us a little bit about those guys? What to expect from them? Yeah, so we've had them here this summer. Haven't seen them actually go out there and do one on ones. That's probably that and receiver, you know, is like, I feel like the rest of our team was here in the spring. So there's like the new, the new spot is the three wide outs. Um, four if you include uh, Cager, and then the defensive linemen, Travon, Bill, uh, Timon, Zion, and those guys have made really big strides in the summer. But I don't go out there expecting these guys are going to be better than the veterans we have. We're going to have to identify quickly who has the potential by week four, five, six to pass up someone because it's going to be hard for them to do that right away. So that's part of our job is positioning – the people that are getting on the bus, the bus is the group that goes to Vanderbilt, and putting them in the right seats. And we always talk about that. And I'm excited to see Bill, Zion, Timon, and Trevon help us. Um, to what extent, I really won't have good judgment until we get through some practices. Two more questions. Following up on Mark's right, I mean, I, uh, it's just so whenever we get a chance to talk to him, I mean, he's just so It's the exact same. I mean, Monty's a businessman when it comes to that. He's not cutting up, messing around at practice. He's very serious about what he does. He's got a purpose about him. He, that's what we knew about him in high school. His high school coaches were really good high school program, and they said, this guy takes it serious. He buys in. He leads. And everything he did there, he's done for us. So we love the way he practices. Hard to answer that question, probably until we get a couple practices under our belt. Wolf has done a tremendous job, put up some really good numbers uh, this summer, lift and running, um, but we haven't done it on the grass with he and Brett, the you know, new kid, and, uh, Fitz, and Fitz, so we're going to have a good group there. We're going to have a really competitive group. John's done a good job, so it's going to be interesting to see how that comes out, but we'll find out in a couple practices. Thank you. Thanks.